Warning, hot dogs forecast and its fumes are incredibly dangerous and can cause serious chemical burns. Use gloves and other protective equipment when handling it. This experiment must be done with adequate ventilation or outside. Today, I'll be extracting relatively pure phosphoric acid from this incredibly old rust remover product that I found. According to the bottle, this rust remover contains about 75% phosphoric acid, which theoretically means I should get a pretty good yield. It also apparently contains some isopropanol and chromic acetate, which I'll need to separate out. To separate out the phosphoric acid, I decided I would go ahead and do it through distillation. So I set up a 1 liter round bottom and poured in the rust remover. Then I set up the simple distillation apparatus and turned on the heating and stirring to get things started. I actually managed to damage my water pump so it didn't put out enough pressure to fill the condenser which was kind of annoying. It originally took quite a while for things to heat up. You can notice that the rust remover has a nice green tint to it and interestingly enough, chromic acetate, which the bottle claimed was in it, is supposed to have a deep red color. This means what we have in solution now is likely chromium-3 oxide formed from the decomposition of the original acetate. Eventually, some vapor started refluxing on the sides of the round bottom. Pure phosphoric acid has a boiling point of 158 degrees Celsius, but solutions of water and phosphoric acid can boil over together at as low as 105 degrees Celsius. After quite a while, the solution began to boil and foam quite excessively. Regardless of this, I began to collect a nice and clear distillate. At first, I thought this might have been the isopropanol that the bottle promised it had in it, but I think it was mostly water. It began to boil around 90 C, showing the characteristic boiling point depression of IPA and water mix, and the distillate had virtually no smell, leading me to believe that it was almost entirely water. The mixture continued to boil and leveled out at about 100 C, where there was some very intense bubbling. I had to try to repeatedly lower and raise the heating mantle and contain the foamy as best I could. Eventually, I left the solution to boil after finding the right heating mantle temperature, and I waited. After nearly four hours of constant distillation and nearly 200 milliliters of water collected, I got rather impatient. So I decided, really stupidly, to ignore the foaming completely. I turned the heat up, replaced the receiving beaker just in case, and then walked away. Eventually I realized this was a horrible idea because I was distilling over my starting green rust remover. Also it was incredibly acidic, meaning I was distilling over phosphoric acid as well. I quickly let things settle down and stop boiling, and then added this incredibly impure distillate back into the distilling flask. Then I carefully began heating and stirring again. I didn't switch my receiving beaker back to the original water containing one until the pH of the distillate coming over was nearly neutral. At this point, it was so late at night that I had to stop the procedure and continue a couple of days later. Of course, when I came back, I managed to knock over and somehow break the beaker containing the water, so this distillation was really going great overall. After cleaning up my spilled product, I started up heating and stirring again and kept chugging along. Eventually it got boiling, and I continued to monitor the foaming to keep it from reaching the distilling head as much as physically possible. There were a couple of times when I was incredibly unlucky, and it did manage to boil over. My solution was to quickly take a wet paper towel and put it against the flask and the temperature adapter, cooling the gases down enough to prevent them from going over. Of course, this did contaminate the water some in the end, but the losses were generally pretty minimal using this method. I continued to let the original solution boil until I saw the temperature rise to about 105 degrees Celsius. The pH of the distillate at this temperature became quite acidic, so I figured it was time to begin collecting the phosphoric acid water mixture. So I hooked up the receiving flask, which was clean and dried with acetone. I began heating and stirring again, and now that most of the water was removed, the bubbling was far less dramatic and problematic. Eventually I got the solution boiling at around 106 degrees celsius, and I was distilling over some dilute phosphoric acid. I turned up the heat quite a bit because the foaming was not an issue anymore. 
and I kept collecting the phosphoric acid containing distillate. The temperature of the flask continued to raise to about 130 C where it plateaued, with still a nice drip rate of distillate coming through the receiving flask. It was interesting that as the temperature was increasing, the chromium compound became a much darker green, and eventually an incredibly dark brown. It also started giving off quite a bit of fumes, so much so that you could see the full light beam of my IR thermometer. Very soon after, I was left with a black sludge at the bottom of the flask, and it looked like the Teflon stir bar was completely destroyed by the hot acid and chromium compounds. Because you should never distill the dryness under most circumstances, I called the distillation here. I turned off the heating and stirring and left everything to cool down. So now, let's take a look at what we ended up with. We collected nearly 350 milliliters of water, not including what I spilled previously. You can see that both samples are acidic, the left one being from later runs and more acidic because it had a few more bubble overs than the right. The shield of water shows that there was definitely not 75% phosphoric acid in the original rust remover, unless it somehow degraded over time. Here's what's left over from the distilling flask. It contains a viscous liquid of phosphoric acid and what looks like the original chromium compound. You can see again that the stir bar was completely degraded and is now black, and there's plenty of junk stuck to the side of the round bottom. I may try to extract the chromium from this in the future. Now onto our phosphoric acid. It looks kind of cloudy and yellow, but I'm not entirely sure what this is from. Some of the vapors from the decomposing stir bar may have contaminated the product, but I'm not entirely certain. To determine the purity, I decided to use a density concentration calculator I found online. I teared a graduated cylinder on a scale and added the phosphoric acid. The final product was about 47 milliliters and had a mass of 48.68 grams. This gave the acid a density of about 1.04 grams per milliliter, and at 18 degrees Celsius, this corresponded to about 6.77% phosphoric acid by weight. This means the original rust remover was only 0.7% acid, so there must have been a good amount of degradation over time or through losses in my trial. I poured this into a storage container and I had my final dilute product. I could have gone a step further and concentrated this phosphoric acid some more by running another distillation, but I chose not to because this first run took over 13 hours over the course of 3 days. If I needed more concentrated solution in the future, I'll go ahead and distill it again, but for now this is as far as I'm going to go. As with the last video, here's a list of all the projects that I currently plan on working on. It took quite a while to produce this video you're watching right now, which I hadn't really expected, but here it is at long last. If you have any ideas for what I could do with this phosphoric acid, feel free to let me know in the comments. I was planning on using it to make some hydroiodic acid. Also, if you feel like supporting me on Patreon for whatever reason, I'll have a link on screen and in the video description. As always, thank you for watching.